Hi. This is the last lecture of this course. It will be about the liquefaction system. Okay. We will talk about the principles of the liquefaction system and we'll take a look at a simple example. Now before we move on to see the principles and examples, let's take a look at how do we turn the gas into the liquid. Okay, for example, on this diagram is a pH diagram of methane. Okay, suppose that we have methane at the condition of one bar here. Okay, 0 0.1 megapascal is one bar. Okay, and the temperature is at uh, 300 Kelvin or is around the room temperature okay so we want to change the methane at this condition into liquid phase so it means that we have to move from 300 Kelvin to the two phase zone here the vapor liquid mixture zone here okay so you can see that one way we can do that is to decrease the temperatures. You know that if we decrease the temperature, we can change the gas into the liquid phase. So if we de decrease the temperature, for example, if we decrease it from 300 degrees Celsius, okay, you can see that this is the isotherm at 200 uh, no, sorry, not 300 degrees Celsius, 300 Kelvin, uh, 200 Kelvin, 160 Kelvin, and 120 Kelvin. You can see that you have to reduce the temperature to a very low value, which is below 120 Kelvin. Okay, so at this point here, perhaps when your gas start to change into liquid at dew point, it would be the temperature around 100 Kelvin, which is very low. So it means that if you choose to decrease only the temperatures, you have to use the refrigeration system at very low temperature indeed, 100 Kelvin. And we already know that the refrigeration system at low temperature, at very low temperature there, it would be very expensive. Okay, so turning the liquid the turning the gas into the liquid by just reducing the temperature is not just an interesting option because it's very expensive here okay so we have to find the other way around okay instead of just cooling the gas directly to the low temperature until it reached the dew point okay we may have to go the other way around, like we compress it, we compress the gas, okay? We compress the gas to the high pressure first, okay? To high pressure. And then to the pressure in which it is above the two phase region here. And then we can cool our gas, okay? Down, but cooling our gas down to the and temperature here may not be that low may not be 100 Kelvin and then when you have cooled your gas until the state had reached the point above the two phase region you can use the expansion valve to expand your gas okay reduce the pressure you can see that you can enter the two phase zone easily Okay, so in this method, okay, it would be less expensive than using the refrigeration alone. You compress the gas first, you cool it down, okay, until the point of the or the condition of the gas is above the two phase region, then you flash it down to the low pressure again. You can have some liquid produced. Okay, so this is a concept here. So the simple liquefaction process will consist of three main steps. The first one is the compression. Okay, the compressor here. 
you may compress the gas in a single stage or in a multi-stage compression as well. Normally, we will do that in a multi-stage compression with intercooling. With intercooling. We already know that um, the work requirement for the multi-stage compression with intercooling would be much less than the single compression step. Okay. Once we have compressed our gas to the high pressure condition, we can then cool it down by using a cooler here. Okay. And then we flash it to the throttling valve, okay, to JT expansion. And then at number four here, you will have vapor plus liquid now. Okay. One is only vapor, two is vapor, three is vapor, and then at point number four you will have vapor plus liquid. You can then separate the vapor from the liquid phase by using a simple fresh drum. Okay, you get gas, okay, gas and the liquefied gas. Liquefied gas means the liquid. Okay, liquefied gas is a liquid. And this fresh drum is just a separator, so it's just an adiabatic flash. There would be no heat transfer with the surrounding. Now, you can see that for this simple liquefaction system, for every one kilogram of gas that we feed to the system, you can see that you have less than one kilogram of the liquid produced. Okay, for example, if at point number four, you have the vapor fraction of X. It means that you have the gas here, which is still gas with X kilogram. And then you have the liquid with one minus X kilogram. So it means that for every one kilogram of gas fee, you have less than one kilogram of liquid produced. So it seems that um, this simple liquefaction process is not that efficient because you got less amount of liquid than the feed. Okay. Um, you can see that um, we can then modify modify the simple liquefaction system or simple liquefaction process to be more efficient. The process which is more efficient would be called the Lin liquefaction process. This is the name of a guy, Lin liquefaction process. In Lin liquefaction process, we will make use of the gas from the fresh drum. Okay, instead of returning that gas back to the storage tank, we will use this gas to cool our compressed gas further. You can see that in this diagram, okay, we have the compressor, it may be multi-stage compressor. You compress it, then you cool it down. This is the cooler. Okay, this is the cooler. You cool it down and then it will flow through a regenerator. This regenerator will be used to further reduce the temperature of your gas. Okay, by exchange, by exchanging the heat with the cold vapor from the fresh drum. This is the cold vapor from the fresh drum. Okay, cold vapor. Okay, cold vapor from the fresh drum. And after exchanging the heat with the in, inside the region rather, the cold vapor here will be returned to the feed point and then it will be mixed with the makeup gas and then return to the uh, compressor again. Okay, so you can see that in this case, if you draw the boundary of the system, if you draw the boundary of the system here, um, I should say the control volume on the boundary of the system. You can see that 
when you consider the overall system, you have only one inlet and one outlet. So it means that for every one kilogram of gas that you feed, you will obtain one kilogram of liquid as well. You will get one kilogram of the liquefied gas as well. So in this case, it would be more efficient than the simple liquefaction process. One kilogram in of gas, you get one kilogram of liquid out. Okay, so it means that you make use of the uh, remaining gas or the remaining vapor. Okay, make use by um, have um, efficient heat transfer in the regenerator and returning to the feed point again. Now in the lean liquefaction process, if we take a look at the cycles or uh, the process on the TS diagram, it would be like this one. Okay, so we start with point number two, which is the compressor inlet compressor inlet here. In this case, you can see that we have a multi-stage compressor. Okay, so from point number two, you can see that we have compressed at the first stage. Okay, this is the first stage compression. Okay, first stage compression. This is the second one. Okay, this is the third one and this is the last one, the fourth state. So it means that in this diagram here, we have four stage compression with three intercooling. Okay, you have one here intercooling, two intercooling and three intercooling. Four stage compression with three intercooling here. Okay, and after the gas exit the last stage compression, it will be cooled down in a cooler. Three to four is your uh, cooler, and then four to five. Instead of thrashing at number four through the wild directory, you have a regenerator. Four to five is the regen. You can then cool the gas down further to a lower temperature by exchanging the heat with the cold vapor from 8 to 9. This is also the region as well. So it means that 4 to 5 will transfer heat to 8 to 9. Okay, this is the region. And then after exiting the regenerator, it will be flashed through an expansion valve. So 5 expanded to 6. This is expansion valve or JT valve. Okay, and then from point number 6 you can see that it's already entered the two-phase region. You have a vapor liquid mixture. You can then separate the vapor from the liquid by using a simple fresh drum. So you get number 8 as a vapor and number 7 as your liquid product. Okay, at number 8, which is your cold vapor, it will be sent through the regenerator to exchange heat with the hot gas. And then from number 9, it will be mixed with the makeup gas or the fresh feed gas. Okay, to be number 2, which is the gas at the compressor inlet again. Okay, so the cycle would be uh, on TS diagram like this. In this specific example, it has four stage compression system. Okay. Now, you can see that in the industry, we normally use lean liquefaction process. It's, also, it's based on the principles of lean liquefaction process. Um, the process in the real industry may be more complex than this one. Okay we can use the lean liquefaction process to liquefy the methane, to liquefy the, um, the oxygen, liquefy the nitrogen that we use in the lab, okay, and other light gases 
that we can use this technique as well to turn from the gas phase into the liquid phase. Now let's have a look at the example of the simple and lean liquefaction process. In this example, we are going to produce the liquefied natural gas or LNG. Okay, liquefied natural gas. Normally for liquefied natural gas, it does not contain only a pure component. It may consist of methane, it may consist of the other component like water or carbon dioxide for example. But in, the, in this example, we will simplify the problems by considering it to be a pure methane. Only a pure methane, okay? We assume that we have uh, LNG which is a pure methane, okay, at 1 bar and 280 Kelvin, okay, which is point number one here, 1 bar and 280 Kelvin, point number one. And then it will leave the cooler, okay, leaving the cooler is the methane at 100 bar and 210 Kelvin. So point number three here is 100 bar and 210 Kelvin. Okay, the fresh drum is adiabatic. Okay, so we don't have the heat transfer with the surrounding in this fresh drum. And then it operates at one bar. Operate at one bar. The compressor can be assumed to operate reversibly and adiabatically. What does it mean? Reversibly and adiabatically. It is isentropic. Okay, it is isentropic. However, because of large pressure change, large pressure change that we are looking at here, we are changing from 1 bar to 100 bar is 100 times. Okay, so if we use only one stage compressor, it will require a large amount of work okay, to be used. So in this case, we will use three stage compression instead with intercooling here. Three stage compressor with intercooling. So the first stage will compress the gas from one to five bar, which is five times. Okay, pressure ratio is five times. The second stage will compress from five to twenty-five, another five times. Okay, and for the third stage or the last stage, it will compress from twenty-five to one hundred bar, which is about four times. Okay, so we split the pressure ratio into three steps. Okay, five times for the first one, five times for the second one, and four times for the last one. Okay, instead of hundred times in a single step. Okay, and between stages, between compression stages, the gas is isobarically cooled down to 280 Kelvin. Okay, so this is the temperature of the at the exit of the intercooler. Okay, 280 Kelvin. Okay, so we want to consider the uh, simple liquefaction process first. Okay, and then we want to determine the amount of work required for each kilogram of methane. that pass through the compressor in the simple liquefaction process. So that would be W dot in per kilogram of methane through the compressor or kilogram of compressor flow. Okay, W in per kilogram of compressor flow. Okay, or methane through compressor. The second one, we want to determine the fraction of vapor and liquid leaving the fresh drum in the simple 
liquefaction process. Or we want to determine the x value, the vapor fraction, x value, leaving the flash drum. Okay? And we also want to determine the amount of compressor work required for each kilogram of LNG produced. Okay? We want to determine W in dot per kilogram of LNG produced as well. Okay? Per kilogram of LNG produced. And lastly, we want to determine the compressor work, the amount of compressor work required for each kilogram of LNG produced if we recycle the methane, recycle the methane leaving the heat exchanger in the lean liquefaction process at 1 bar and 200 Kelvin. So it means that we will compare the performance of the simple and lean liquefaction process. Okay, and the condition of the lean liquefaction process here at number 5 prime is 1 bar and 200 Kelvin. Okay, 1 bar and 200 Kelvin here. Alright then. Now, I'm going to consider the um, simple liquefaction process first. In a simple liquefaction process, you can start from the inlet point, okay, the, the point of the feed gas. You can use the pH diagram of methane to determine the property at each point, okay, of the process, okay. Now, we can start from point number one. Point number one here, which is the inlet of the gas, you already know that our condition is at one bar and 280 Kelvin. So you can just uh, locate that inlet point. Okay. Your inlet point is here, 1 bar, this is 1 bar, level 1 bar, and 280 Kelvin. 280 Kelvin is this line. The isotherm of 280 Kelvin is this line. Okay. 280 Kelvin. Okay, this line. Alright. So you get point number one. So at point number one here, you can just read the enthalpy value directly from the x axis. Okay. Now you can then move to the other point by following each process step. In this case, you will compress in the first stage compressor. It will be compressed in an isentropic manner, okay? But unfortunately, point number one here is not located on an any isentropic line. You can see that the isentropic line is, for example, this point, okay? Uh, this line, seven, okay? Isentropic value of seven, isentropic line at 6.5, for example, okay, an isentropic line of 7.5. Now point number one is not located on any isentropic line. So you have to create your own, okay, by just interpolate a new line between 7 and 7.5, get your new isentropic line, okay. Just draw the, the line which is reasonable line, okay, which is located between um, the two existing lines, 7 and 7.5. So you follow that line, okay, until you have reached the final pressure. So the outlet of the first stage compressor would be point A, which is at 5 bar. 0 0.5 megapascal is at 5 bar, okay. And after that, you cool it down in an intercooler. You cool it down in an isobaric process. So the pressure will be constant. You just move along in horizontal direction, okay, to the exit temperature of the intercooler, which is 280 Kelvin. So you move from A to B. And from point B again, you just compress in the second stage. You don't have any isentropic line at this point. 
you have to interpolate your own line okay so from B you compress it by following an isentropic part to point C which is at 25 bar okay 25 bar here then you cool it down in the second intercooler isobarically to 280 Kelvin again that will be point D now at point D is located on this isentropic line now so it would be easy for you this time okay this is isentropic line at 5.5 you can just follow the isentropic line to the final pressure in the third stage compression that would be point number two at 100 bar okay or 10 megapascal from point number two your gas will be cooled down in the final cooler okay it will be isobaric cooling as well so it will cool down okay to 210 Kelvin you don't have 210 so again you have to create your own isotherm okay between 200 and 220 okay so you have your own isotherm here you get point number three which is the uh, cooler exit okay and then after that you flash it through an expansion valve for the JT expansion you already know that it would be isenthalpic process so you will move vertically okay because enthalpy is constant along this process so from number three you move down in the vertical direction to number four back to the um, the exit pressure again this is at point number four the pressure in the fresh drum okay it would be one bar so point number four here is one bar now you can see that you already enter the two-phase region okay you already enter the two-phase region you can have the liquid produced at number six okay you can have the remaining vapor out at number five and that would be your simple liquefaction process one inlet but you have gas at number five and liquid at number six at you, as your uh, two outlet okay now you can see that once you have drawn each process part on the pH diagram it means that you can just read the value of enthalpy at any point directly from the graph okay it would be very straightforward here now here are the summarized uh, here are the summary of the property value at every point so you can see at point one which is the starting point you can read the enthalpy value 940 okay from point one to point a is this an um, compression okay isentropic compression so you just follow the isentropic tropic line okay from the graph you can read the enthalpy value and you can also read the temperature value at the first stage exit as well okay so you can get all the the property that you want from the um, diagram okay from the diagram which is uh, which are the blue uh, blue boxes here in this table now having known all the enthalpy value you can do the energy balance in each process to determine the energy transfer for example the work input or for example the heat transfer in or out in each process then okay for example here in the first process this is process 1a you can just do the energy balance to calculate the work requirement for the first stage a to B you can calculate the cooling requirement in the first intercooler okay for example so you can determine the heat or work transfer in every process then okay of um, the simple 
liquefaction process. Now, you can just calculate on the basis of one kilogram of methane feed. One kilogram of methane feed here. Okay, so um, the energy balance, you can calculate the um, compressor work required in the first stage, compressor work required in the second stage, okay, compressor work required in the third stage. Cooling required in the first intercooler, cooling required in the second intercooler, and cooling required in the final cooler, okay. So you can just calculate the total work requirement by combining the work from every compression stage together. Okay, from the first one, second one, and the third one. So you have the total work requirement per kilogram of feed. Okay, feed gas. Okay, and Similarly, you can call, ca also calculate the cooling, the total cooling requirement in the first stage intercooler, second stage intercooler, and the final cooler. That will be around 1,169 kilojoule per kilogram of feed gas as well. Okay. Now, We also want to calculate the, the fraction of the vapor that we would get from the fresh drum. Okay, so you can see that the gas which, um, or the, the, the methane that enter the fresh drum, it would be one kilogram from our basis. Okay, it would be uh, exiting the fresh drum with the x kilogram of gas and 1 minus x kilogram of the liquid. We want to, to determine the x value here. So we can determine the x value here by doing the energy balance around the fresh drum. Okay, so we can say that the energy in, which is M4H4, will be equal to energy out. It would be M6H6 plus M5H5. E in equal to E out. Okay. So we have H4 equal to 1 minus x HL enthalpy of the set liquid at 1 bar plus x multiplied by HV enthalpy of the set vapor at 1 bar. Enthalpy at number 4 is equal to enthalpy at number 3. You can get the value from the pH diagram. This is the Joule Thomson expansion. HL at one bar, okay, is enthalpy at number six. HV at num at one bar is enthalpy at point number five. So you know the enthalpy, all enthalpy values. So you can just substitute them, and then calculate the vapor fraction. So it means that vapor fraction is zero point eight two six. This is vapor, and 1 minus x would be your liquid fraction that you would get. This is the liquid. So it means that from the simple liquefaction process, for 1 kilogram of the gas that you feed into the system, 1 kilogram of the gas, you will get only 0.174 kilogram of the liquid only. One kilogram of gas, only 0 0.174 kilogram of the liquid produced. Okay, so you can see that it's very small production. You put in one, you get only 17.4% of the liquid out. Okay, so if we calculate the work requirement per unit mass of the product, that you would get. Unit mass of the product that you would get, that would be LNG produced. This is your product. Okay. So the work requirement per unit mass of the product that you would get, it would be um, the work in, total work in, you have just calculated that, 722 kilojoule 
per kilogram of feed gas divided by the LNG gas produced it would be 0 0.174 kilogram of LNG per kilogram of the feed gas that you put in okay so it means that the energy requirement it would be very high okay the work requirement is 4,149 kilojoule per kilogram of LNG produced. Very high. So it means that the cost of LNG production per one kilogram of LNG production is very high. Okay. You have to compress one kilogram of gas. You have to cool down one kilogram of gas but you get only 0 0.174 kilogram of the liquid. It's not that efficient at all. You can see from the value that you obtain from this example. Okay, very high. Large amount of work required. Okay, large amount of work required. Now, let's move on to the linear refraction process which we already know that it would be more efficient than the simple liquefaction process in the linear liquefaction process you can see <coughs> you can see that you have a regenerator here okay you have a regenerator here to exchange heat between the cold gas and the hot gas okay and then we will recycle the cold gas back to the compressor again so the condition that we also have in case of the Lin process is that at point 5 prime 5 prime here the condition would be 1 bar and 200 Kelvin okay 1 bar and 200 Kelvin so the gas from number 5 prime it will be mixed with the feed the fresh feed gas this is the fresh the fresh feed gas okay fresh feed gas this is the recycled gas so the fresh feed gas it will be mixed with the recycled gas and then enter the compressor so you can see that at this moment you know the condition of phi prime phi prime okay because you already know the pressure and temperature you can locate the point phi prime on the pH diagram you also already know the condition of number one which is the fresh feed gas one bar and 280 Kelvin okay so one would be mixed with phi prime to become one prime which is a compressor inlet one prime here is a compressor inlet the problem is that you don't know the condition at one prime yet because one prime here will depends on the fraction between number one and number five prime okay if you have large amount of fresh feed gas point one prime would be close to one okay if you have a large amount of the recycled gas on the other hand you will have 0.1 prime which is close to 5 prime so it depends on the fraction of each portion that you mix together okay depends on the fraction of the fresh feed gas to the recycled gas so it means that you have to determine the portion this kind of portion first okay so you have to make some more assumption here okay so you assume that instead of use the feed gas basis at one kilogram you will assume that the basis would be one kilogram of the feed gas one kilogram of the gas through the compressor so here at one prime here it would be one kilogram one kilogram of gas through the compressor so exit the compressor at number two it is also one kilogram okay 
at number three here is still one kilogram okay at number three prime is still one kilogram here at number four is still one kilogram at number five we assume that the vapor fraction is x so it would be x kilogram and the liquid that you get would be 1 minus x kilogram okay from number 5 it flows through the regenerator mass flow rate at number 5 prime is also x kilogram okay and the recycled gas is x kilogram okay so x kilogram you will need 1 minus x more to make it 1 kilogram so the fresh feed gas that you require would be 1 minus x kilogram so you can see that you have just set up a basis of 1 kilogram of feed gas through the compressor it means that the fresh feed gas would be 1 minus x 1 minus x kilogram and you get the liquefied gas with the same amount 1 minus x kilogram as well and the recycled gas flow would be x kilogram of the recycled gas okay x kilogram of recycled gas so this is the um, enthalpy um, no not enthalpy the mass balance of the based on the one kilogram of gas through the compressor basis okay now let's move on how do we calculate the x kilogram or the x value the flow rate of the recycled gas we can set up an enthalpy balance around this envelope here around the um, red dashed line envelope here now you can see that if you establish an envelope here which con which include the regenerator the tottering valve and the fresh drum you can see that these three pieces of equipment are adiabatic equipment okay heat exchanger here are adiabatic you don't have the heat transfer between the heat exchanger and the surrounding tottering valve is also um, no heat transfer as well and fresh drum is also a diabetic in these three pieces of equipment you also don't have the work transfer as well you don't have the work transfer in and out as well so by drawing the envelope around these three pieces of equipment you have one inlet this is your inlet one inlet would be at number three and two inlet at number five prime and number six here you can see that the reason why we choose to draw the envelope around these three pieces of equipment is that you already know the enthalpy condition at these three points okay you know h3 you know h5 prime and you know h6 you know H enthalpy at every point so you can do the energy balance to determine the X value here that you want to know first okay now by doing the energy balance around the control volume here you have m3 h3 which is energy in equal to m6 h6 plus m5 prime h5 prime which are the energy out okay you can substitute the enthalpy at number three enthalpy at number six enthalpy at number five prime and then you can calculate the vapor fraction from the fresh drum the vapor fraction from the fresh drum here is 0 0.604 okay and the liquid fraction that you get from the fresh drum would be zero point three nine six this is the liquid fraction now at this point you can see that when you compare the fraction of the liquid when you compare you when you compare the fraction of the liquid that you get from the fresh drum it 
you can see a lot of improvement, a significant improvement of the amount of the liquid. This is 39.6%. Uh, okay, so it means that for every one kilogram of the gas flowing through the compressor, you get 39% of that gas turned into the liquid. When compared to the simple liquefaction process that you have seen just earlier, you can have liquid with just around 17%. Okay, this one is a significant improvement. You got a large amount, a larger amount of the liquid produced when compared to the simple liquefaction process. Okay. Now, once you have the x value, you can then the balance around the mixing point okay enthalpy of the stream out okay you have um, recycle 5 prime this is the recycle gas 1 this is a fresh feed gas and then 1 prime this is gas entering the compressor enter compressor this is the recycle and this is the fresh feed gas okay so you when you do the energy balance or enthalpy balance around the mixing point you can then substitute x value okay that you have just calculated in the previous slide okay you can substitute enthalpy at number one which is for the fresh feed gas enthalpy at five prime which is enthalpy of the recycled gas and then you can calculate the enthalpy of the gas mixture h1 prime okay so the gas mixture which enter the compressor will have the enthalpy of 837.3 kilojoule per kilogram okay when you know the enthalpy value, you can then locate the point one prime on your pH diagram. Okay, and at that point, you can also read the temperature as well. Temperature of the gas entering the compressor would be around two hundred and thirty-three Kelvin. Okay. Now, once you can locate it, uh, once you can locate the um, inlet point to the compressor. You can then do the same procedure that we have done before. You can start from point one prime. Okay, you can compress. Okay, by following the isentropic line. Okay, in this case, you have to establish your own line between six point five and seven. Okay, and then you compress from one bar to five bar. Cool it down. For the first intercooler to 280 Kelvin, compress again following another isentropic line to 25 bar here and then cool it down in, an, in the second intercooler to 280 Kelvin. Okay, to 280 Kelvin and then compress in the final step, okay, to 100 bar. Okay. And after that, you cool it down in the final cooler from point number two to point number three here at 210. And then you cool it down further, okay, by using the regenerator. The outlet would be at number three prime. You already know the enthalpy um, at point number um, three prime here. Three prime and four would be the same, okay. 3 prime and 4 would be the same. Um, and then you can um, split it, okay? Split it um, into the vapor at number 5 and liquid at number 6, okay? And from number 5, it will flow through the regenerator, okay? It will become 5 prime and then mix with the fresh feed gas number one to become one prime here 
So you have complete the whole process on the pH diagram now. Okay. Now doing the same thing. Once you once you know the enthalpy at every point, you can calculate the work requirement or you can calculate the um, heat transfer in the process in any process now. Okay. Now you can calculate the um, work requirement okay for each step okay you get the work requirement for the first stage compression work requirement for the second stage compression work requirement for the third stage compression okay here all right so the work requirement in each compression state it would be per kilogram of gas flowing through compressor it will be based on kilogram of gas flowing through compressor okay kilogram of gas through compressor okay this is also gas through compressor as well So the, the summation of the work requirement in each compression stage, it would be 650 kilojoule per kilogram of the gas through compressor. Okay, of gas through compressor. Now, we don't want to know this value. We don't want to know 650 kilogram, uh, kilojoule per kilogram of gas through compressor. We want to know the amount of work requirement per kilogram of the LNG that we can produce. Okay, so we have to divide it by the fraction of kilogram of LNG that we can produce per kilogram of the gas through compressor. We already know this fraction. Per 1 kilogram of the gas flowing through the compressor, you get 0 0.369, uh, 0 0.396 kilogram of LNG. So when you divide it, um, 650 kilojoule per kilogram of gas flowing through compressor by 0 0.396 kilogram of, of LNG per kilogram of gas flow through compressor, you will get 1,641 kilojoule per kilogram of LNG produced. You can see that when you compare the work requirement values from the Lin process, it's only 1,641. When compared to the simple liquefaction process, it's around 4,000, 4,100 something kilojoule per kilogram of RNG produced. So you can see that the energy efficiency in the Lin liquefaction process is a lot better. Okay, the work requirement is a lot less than the work requirement per unit mass of the product from the simple liquefaction process okay so we can see that um, nowadays the liquefaction process is already based on the principles of the Lin liquefaction process that we have discussed here and I guess that would be the end of this last lecture okay thank you for your patience with my English Thank you with your attention for the all video clip that you have followed so far. Okay, I wish you the very best of luck in your final exam. Goodbye.